All right, so I All see right. we've still got some folks jumping in. Do um, you want to wait till two after, Jill, to kick it off? Okay, two after. Oh no! Are, are you I know. Really I know. Uh, look, I'm 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 resetting the time. I'm going to calm down. I'm going to breathe deeply and slowly. We're going to be okay. We're going to get through this together. Okay, I got you. <laughs> I got you. So. Paige, I, I was um, traveling Sunday. I, was were the Panthers at home on Sunday? They were. They were. So, do you want to um, tell about your Panther connection this year briefly? Which one? Do you mean Casey or Jake? Oh yeah, well I didn't even think about Casey. He's he's kind of an afterthought these days. Um, I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about Jake? I thought you probably meant Jake, but then I was like, well, yeah, my no, husband no, totally is forgot. randomly is randomly the hype man for the Panthers this year, like the in-stadium hype man, which they've never really even had before. And he got a call before COVID and they said, your name kept coming up in these meetings. Like, we don't know who you are. We hear you work in mortgages, but somebody said you'd be a good hype man. Like those two things don't typically go hand in hand. So he is now, he and his partner are the hype man in studio, uh, in studio, uh, in, in the stadium, which means that I'm a single parent from 6 a.m. till 6 p.m. on Sundays, on home game Sundays, which is really David and how it affects me so, so Big much. Big fan. That's yes, what matters. That's what matters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So if, Unfortunately, if guys, he's not bringing him a whole lot of luck this season. Well, it's been a crazy season. Injury, injury riddled season for sure. Um, but if you, if you are in the, um, if, if you're at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte and you see that guy like trying to raise the roof and get people excited, he's like nine feet tall and his hair is like two more feet tall. That's actually Paige's husband, Jake. Um, and uh, they, they live in Charlotte. She'll uh, she'll give a little bit of background here in a bit, but I thought that was a kind of a cool connection. So, um, well, it's two after. Let's get started because we've got we have an awful lot to cover today, and I'm I'm excited about jumping into it. So, um, thank you all for taking time to to join us. Um, I'm super super thrilled um, to have you here, and I'm I'm excited that we're um, you know we, we've got we've got Paige with us. We've got Paige Failing, who we're going to introduce here a little bit more formally later. Um, and, um, just excited to see all of you again. It, it's great. Like, um, you know, we were talking a little bit before things got kicked off. We, we saw a lot of, a lot of us were able to see each other at the parade to homes dinner, um, last week. And just, it's cool, man. It's, it's, it's nice that, uh, we've got, we've, we've still got that community that we've built that we're, um, we're rolling on. So, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start rolling here. Um, first thing to start with, just to remind you, we, we are still the very best sales and marketing council in the country. I, I say it every, every month, but like, just remember, objectively speaking, um, that's what we were voted on by our peers and uh, at a national level. So it's kind of cool that we still have that, um, that crown, that tiara, if you will. And um, Jill, I think, is just finishing up or has recently finished up our submission for uh, 2021. So keep your fingers crossed that we can um, pull off, I think, a three-peat now, Jill. We're back-to-back we're -back champs at the moment and going for a three-peat. So like Michael Jordan dynasty style here. Going for um, the hat, -trick. hat trick. There you go for, for you NHL fans. Um, but a lot of what we're able to do is made possible by our sponsors. And so we want to start just by uh, showing some appreciation and thanking our sponsors um, our corporate level sponsors, first of all, are the Jim Allen Group, Truist, Go Prime Mortgage. And so the, to those three companies and organizations, we, we so appreciate you guys. Our diamond level sponsors, Angel Oak Home Loans, Coastal Federal Credit Union, Lights Unlimited, Movement Mortgage, News and Observer, and Wells Fargo Home Mortgage. So thanks to each of you uh, as, as well. Um, your, your donations and your commitment allow us to bring speakers like Paige and have, have events like this. And it, it's something that we um, genuinely appreciate. Um, we do have an amazing speaker lined up, a personal friend of mine, Paige Failing. Um, the topic of her presentation is going to be communicating with confidence, professional presentations with power and passion. And um, I'm excited, man. She's, she's a wealth of knowledge. Uh, I don't want to spoil the, uh, the intro that JC has, but um, you are in for a treat, truly. So if you have friends or um, somebody that you think could benefit from something like this, shoot them a text real quick and get them on here because this is going to be a fun time that we're going to kick off here in about 15, 20 minutes. Um, we do have some announcements to get through first um, and some sales performance awards to give out. So I want to start with, uh, I alluded to it earlier, I um, want, to, want to thank you guys for your sponsorship and for your volunteer efforts for our big give back this year. Um, as with so many things in this era right now, at the last minute, we had a change. Um, uh, rebuilding together had to shift the number of volunteers per shift that we were allowed to have just based on their COVID requirements. 
And so we went from having 25 volunteers per shift for four shifts, we went down to having 10 per shift for four shifts. So we cut the number of volunteers that we had allocated in half. We still got all the work done, which speaks to the uh, diligence of those that were there. Um, and if it weren't for the kindness of the sponsors, it would not have gone smoothly, as, as, as smoothly as it did. Um, so Caitlin, Mary Jo, I don't know, uh, MJ, if you're on, I can't see you yet, but Caitlin, I know you are. Do you want to give us a report about uh, how that big give back went? Yeah, definitely. Happy to do that. So as you guys know, TSMC joined forces with Re Rebuilding Together the Triangle for the big give back, as David said. Um, this happened on October 5th and 6th, two shifts each day. Um, I'll start by saying the weather was perfect. Oh my God, it was amazing. Everyone showed up ready to work and and boy, did we get to work. We did a lot. Carpet was uh, removed pretty much throughout the entire house. Uh, new flooring was installed. Volunteers were up on the roof sweeping off pine needles. Uh, the backyard was spruced up and a ton of painting was done on the exterior. It made a huge impact. Uh, Miss Linda and her daughter were beyond grateful. We were told several times throughout that they could not find the words to express their gratitude and saying thank you just did not seem enough to them. So thank you, thank you so much to everyone who sponsored and worked the event. Uh, we are looking into adding another give back for those who initially signed up but couldn't work because of the cutback in volunteers. Um, a special shout out to Ashton Woods and Open Door for both donating $1,000 each and also to Epcon Communities for donating a, a washer and dryer. It goes so far. It means so much to us. It was just a phenomenal community event. So thank you, thank you. Back to you, David. Thanks, Caitlin. And, and thanks to, again to all of you that, that donated, to those of you that participated. Um, thanks to e each of you. And to those that ha didn't have a chance to volunteer in this, definitely be on the lookout. Um, this is my favorite thing that we do. I, I mean, everything that we do throughout the year, like there's so many valuable add-ons that we have. This is my favorite because we get to spend time together. We get to do some good in the community. We get to give back to the community in which we all live and work. Um, and man, just like being able to be there and, and see the real time progress happen. Um, it's a fulfilling thing. So Caitlin, I know like that is a massive labor of love that you and Mary Jo uh, took on and you, you ladies did a fantastic job this year. So well done to you as well. And thank you for the hard work and making it all happen. Um, so uh, let's, uh, let's, let's move over to build pack. Um, and Mr. Alan Oliver is going to share with us a little bit about what's going on with um, the uh, Build Political Action Committee, which is what that acronym stands for, um, what, what our donations are being used for, and why it's so important to continue to donate to that. So, Alan, I'll turn it over to you, sir. All right. Thank, uh, thank you, David. Yeah, we are in the home stretch of municipality elections, uh, November 2nd. Uh, all the local municipalities are up except for uh, Carrie and Raleigh, they've, ex they've moved theirs to next year. But for now, we have uh, Fuquay, Fu Fu Farina, Gardner, Holly Springs, Nightdale, Morrisville, Rollsville, Wake Forest, uh, Wendell, Wendell, and Zebulon that are uh, having their elections November 2nd. We have interviewed over 40 candidates as a bill pack uh, uh, entity. Uh, we're going to give close to twenty thousand dollars to the to the candidates that we feel are the most pro builder and pro growth. A couple of no, noteworthy ones is we have our very own past president of the HBA, Blake Massengill of Massengill Design Build, who is running for mayor of Fu. I cannot. I kill it every time. Fuque Farina. Fuque so Farina. If you're if you live there, yeah. Pause laughing. Um, yeah, uh, if you live there, please go out and vote for Blake. He's on the council right now. Obviously, he knows building because he is one. And then another one that is a builder that's running for mayor of Holly Springs, uh, the, the last mayor who was there for many, many years is retiring or, or and so we actually have an opportunity to actually put another builder member and that is Sean. I'm going to kill this one too. May may. Mayeski. So, uh, what was that? Mayeski. Yes. So he's he is a builder member. So we really appreciate anybody. Uh, he gets our issues. And again, uh, you know, this is a labor of love to interview this many candidates. And uh, even if we don't, if they may not win this time, they may come back again. They at least have had an opportunity to hear our issues 
and we have a place at the table uh, when they get elected that we can bring our issues to them. So uh, the, uh, and like I was saying, next, uh, next year, we will roll over Kerry and Ra Raleigh. So we will start to have to build our, our war chest again for our PAC donations. So I will be back at it with you all in January when we are in person and I have flat screen TVs to give away so that we can raise lots of money for Build PAC for next year too. So that's my report, Dave, thanks. Thank you, Alan, appreciate it. Um, and look, we, we've had a lot of new folks enter our industry over the last 18, 24 months. And, and just, uh, I'll, I'll quickly say this, you know, these local elections have such a big impact on our industry. And um, if, if you're not really clear on how this all ties together, your donations, our donations, my donation um, from a personal level to our build pack allows the HBA to support um, candidates that have a, um, a good view or at least an open view to having conversations with us about um, growth in our market. And it, it's, it's such an important thing for us. And there have been so many tangible wins that we've had that have helped our new construction industry in the triangle over the last couple of elections. Um, so if, if you're not really sure, like, why are we talking about this and why are we getting involved in, in, in local elections and this kind of thing? It's, it's to help the industry. It's to help all of us do what we do, support our, our community, build homes for people that we desperately need right now. Um, and so I, I just wanted to kind of share that for some of those folks that may be listening to this, but not really connecting the dots. That's why we keep talking about it. And that's why we um, uh, invest the time that we do. So Alan, thank you, because I, I know that you do a ton of work behind the scenes on this. So thank you so much. Um, Ned, let's, uh, let's hear a little bit about what's going on from membership, uh, if you don't yeah. mind, sir. Absolutely. Thanks, David. Uh, well, got great news and bad news. Uh, the great news is I don't have to pronounce any towns or, or names this morning. Uh, the bad news is that we don't have any new TSMC members to report for September. Um, uh, first time in a really long time that we hadn't had a, a, a new member uh, for the month. So, I mean, I'm still feeling really good about our efforts. Um, we, we're still doing the coffee chat next week, uh, October 28th at 9 a.m. Um, so it, anybody who uh, would like to, uh, is please join us. We just kind of uh, chat, get to know each other, talk about Home Builders Association and, and uh, kind of go over ways to get involved and things like that. So I'm um, really good time again, the 28th at 9 a.m. Please, uh, please join us if you can. Um, takes about 30 minutes. And uh, again, just go over the TSMC, get to know the execs, the staff and, uh, and the board. So um, if, you, uh, if you're already in the parking lot setting up for the grill and chili challenge, you can just come on in and, uh, and, and chat with us in person. Um, Jill and Paul and uh, the rest of us will will be there either via Zoom or uh, or in the uh, in the in the room physically. So I'm sure we'll have coffee brewing as well. There we go. Love it, Ned. Thanks, man. I appreciate you doing that, and thanks for all your work this year and and coordinating these coffee chats and kind of bringing in our, our new members into the fold, so to speak. Um, so it's a great time. Thank you for that. So let's also hear from our um, uh, MAME co-chairs, Janice and Hunter, about um, our annual MAME awards coming up, the, the theme, and just a little bit about what's going on. And you guys can see it here now. So Hunter, I'll turn it over to you. I'll take it first, David. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. The MAME committee met last week, and we received a detailed report by the Rules and Regulations Subcommittee um, that there will be a lot of changes made to the call for entries this year. Um, in order to be relevant for today's new home sales and marketing, new categories will be added, old ones will be removed, and some exist existing categories have been renamed to match our market today. Since there will be a lot of changes, and I'm sure a lot of questions go along with that, we have decided to host MAME School again this year. That will be held Thursday, January 13th, 2022, um, to address any questions and provide great information to those who are new to submitting MAME entries. We will have details to follow um, shortly. Thank you, Janice. Um, in addition to a super overhaul, overhaul of the um, rules and regulations for entries, the sponsorship committee has also been hard at work. Uh, we have um, kind of redone most of the sponsorship levels uh, to reflect an in-person main uh, event this year, which you know we, we've been planning forever and we're, we're fi finally excited to get there. Um, the newest sponsorship level is actually going to be our entertainment sponsorship. Um, this is a really fun way and uh, exciting way to get your company logo 
as being part of the evening's entertainment. Um, and, you know, just hearing your company's name being announced as the MCs says tonight's entertainment provided by you. Um, how exciting. So the call for entries will go live on December 10th, and then the main entry portal will open in early January. David, back to you. Thank you both. And thanks for the, um, this is the third year, I think that you guys are, are coordinating Maine, which is like unprecedented, it never happens. It's usually a one and done thing. And these two are, are um, in their final stretch of a, of a marathon and they keep just raising the bar every time they've navigated some weird stuff and they, they uh, have been able to bring back their original idea and, and really refresh it and refine it for today. So super excited to see this play out over the next couple of months. Um, we are also doing something in November, um, and um, it is uh, No Shave November, and our very own Rachel Ham is going to tell us a little bit more about that and uh, how you can get involved. So, Rachel, you want to jump on and talk to us about this? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm working from my home office today, um, <laughs> which never happens. Um, so I want to tell everyone about No Shave November. This is a fundraiser that we at the HBA of Raleigh Wake are doing to go towards our charitable foundation. And um, we are raising money because we give scholarships every year, um, $10,000 in scholarships to Wake Tech students who are studying in building related fields, such as engineering, architecture, plumbing, electrical engineering, you know, all that fun stuff. And we really want to make sure that the future of our industry is bright and that uh, good students are getting help um, to learn trades. So the idea behind No Shave November is you can do one of two things. You can sign up as a participant and say that you will not shave for the entire month of November. Um, Ned Ligon, this would be perfect for you. Hunter, you guys. <laughs> should sign up. It'd be great. Um, and you just don't shave. And then you ask your friends, families, and colleagues to sponsor you for your efforts. We're suggesting a minimum donation of $50, but they can give more, they can give less, it's up to them. Um, and we're asking each participant to try and raise at least $200. If we get 50 per participants agreeing to not shave for one month, and they each raise $200, we will have hit our $10,000 goal. Super easy. Um, if you don't want to be a participant, if you really like shaving and you want to continue shaving for the month, um, like David Colgan, you can donate to one of the participants. So it's super easy. Everyone can be involved. Ladies, don't feel like you can't participate. There are parts of your body that you can shave or not shave. Um, you can even say, hey, I'm not going to shave my face for the month. And then you will be the least changed. <laughs> out of the entire month. That's totally fine. We even have a special award for a lady who participates. So somebody, so please sign up. You can sign up on our website or you can email me directly and get signed up. We'll do a mid-month check-in at the November 16th Builder Appreciation Night. So make sure um, that you get signed up before November 1st so we can get you all the information. Um, and then I also just want to do a quick shout out to the Grill and Chili Challenge. That is coming up next week, next Thursday, the 28th. Tickets are on sale on the website. Or again, you can email me and I can get you tickets. It's $20 uh, for tickets. You get all of the uh, wings and chili and mystery meat that you could eat. And it's going to be a really fun time. So thank you all. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the breakfast. Thank you, Rachel. Hey, before you go, will you just throw in the chat a link to the, the site where folks can um, jump on and register or donate? Um, yes, I will. Give me one second. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Um, Rachel um, uh, put me in a headlock at the Parade of Homes dinner and asked me to go ahead and get my donation. I, I told her I'd donate and I just hadn't done it. So she is, I'm telling you, she's working it because she tracked me down and I'm now supporting Tom and Hud in his No Shave November efforts. So I'm excited. Yeah, I, I already put the invoice in. So he's, he's locked in. Um, she's on if it. Anyone is, if anyone's curious, the people who we already have signed up as participants Tom and Hud, Paul Kane, Jay Upchurch, David Price, um, Dave Hosfeld, um, uh, Keith Hill, and uh, Joshua Gould. So we have some great people signed up already to participate. Yeah, if you guys could flood Keith Hill with the uh, donation, that would be that'd be a personal favor to me. He's a good friend of mine, and I'd love to see him get scraggly. So, um, all right, well, cool. Well, thank you, Rachel, for for that, um, and uh, I'm super excited about Grill and Chili as well. So, um, Selena Day with HBA of Durham, Orange, and Chatham Counties couldn't be here this morning, so I promised I'd make an announcement on her behalf. And these are two events for um, uh, HBA DOC that you need to know about. 
One is the ROC Awards on October 26th at Tobacco Road Sports Cafe, and they are now accepting donations for the annual casino night. All proceeds benefit the HBA DOC Scholarship Program. And uh, we also now want to turn our, our attention and, and celebrate our Triangle Sales Performance winners for August. Um, our industry's on-site agents work so hard and deserve to be recognized. Please don't forget to submit you and your team's sales performance numbers each month. If you want to be added to the monthly email reminder, please add your information to the chat. And I think Ms. Erica Oliver is doing the honors for us this morning. So Erica, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, okay, so the winners for September are, here we go, take my big breath. Individual, adjoining a county detached, attached, highest sales volume and number of homes sold selling 14 homes in Cameron Crossing for 3,872,800 goes to Blaine Wiles with Terramore Homes. The winner for an individual adjoining accounting detached, highest sales volume and number of homes sold selling 10 homes in San Marino for 3,964,100 goes to Clark Brantley with Terramore Homes. The winner for individual Durham County attached, highest sales volume and number of homes sold selling two homes in Nichols Farm for 950,180 goes to Tara Fullerton with DR Horton. The winner for individual Durham County detached, highest sales volume and number of homes sold selling five homes in Brighton Station for 2,532,838 and 78 cents goes to Katina Hughes with Meritage Homes. Winner for individual Orange County detached, highest sales volume and number of homes sold selling five homes in Collins Ridge townhomes for 1,828,215 goes to Demetria Batchelor with DR Horton. Winner for individual Wake County attached, highest sales volume and number of homes sold selling 10 homes in Willows at Traditions for 3,682,000 1560 goes to Tucker Beck with Lennar. The winner for individual Wake County detached, highest sales volume, selling five homes in Fairview Park for 3,282,472 goes to Donna ben Bennett with Madame Homes. The winner for individual Wake County detached, highest sales volume and number of homes sold, selling seven homes in Haywood Glen for 3,261,500 goes to Laquita Douglas with Terramore Homes. Individual multi-community one agent to two or more communities detached, highest sales volume and number of homes sold, selling five homes in the courtyards on Holt and the courtyards at West Cary for 2,780,645 goes to Gina Jones with Epcon Community. Winner for team category, two or more agents, adjoining county, highest sales volume and number of homes sold, selling seven homes in Bedford at, Flower, Bedford at Flowers Plantation for 3,076,894 goes to Jamie Matala and Stephanie Fidal with Madame Homes. Winner for team category, two or more agents, Chatham County, Highest sales volume and number of homes sold selling eight homes in Legacy at Jordan Lake for 4,958,920 goes to Donna Johnson and Earl Sherman with MI Homes. The winner for team category, two or more agents in Durham County, highest sales volume and number of homes selling 17 homes in Findle Farms for 7,383,700 and 20 goes to Matt Loveless, Patty James, and Gloria Young with Lennar. The winner for team category, two or more agents, Orange County, highest sales volume and number of homes sold, selling eight homes in Collins Ridge for 2,822,380 goes to Demetria Batchelor and Tyler Ball with DR Horton. Winner for Team category, two or more agents, Wake County, highest sales volume and number of homes sold, selling 14 homes in Smith Farm for 7,157,146 goes to Denise Ford, Declan Burns, and Matt Levesque with Lennar. Team category for two through 10 agents, 
two or more communities, multi-communities, highest sales volume, and number of homes sold selling two homes in the Orchard and Culvert Farms for $2,146,815 goes to Kathy Lockwood and Allison Guthrie with Hearthstone Luxury Homes. And the winner for Mega Team, highest sales volume and number of homes selling 63 homes in many communities across the triangle for $41,782,362 goes to Jim Allen with the Jim Allen Group. So that brings us to the total sales submitted for September 21 was $158,869,627.27. Congrats, guys. Thanks so much for your hard work. Back to you, David. Thank you, Erica. And um, wow, incredible. Like in a month, that's crazy to see these numbers. And I love seeing it um, roll, get rolled through and just see them kind of accumulate and grow as, as we go. Um, it's awesome. I mean, you know, you guys are, are dealing with all kinds of challenges and supply chain challenges, inventory challenges, lotteries, and still, in spite of that, you're, you're doing some amazing, amazing work. Um, so kudos to all of you and, and uh, you, on-site agents are definitely um, doing, doing the, 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 the Lord's work, if you will. So, well, let's, um, let's, jump, into, um, let's jump into our speaker. I, I know that we've got um, a, a really good speaker here lined up for us and JC, um, just I'll remind you and I'll remind me that, listen, everybody, if you are currently not in speaker view, it might be a good idea to change your view to speaker view. And you can do that up in the settings in the top right corner for most of you, I think, in Zoom. So um, when Paige jumps on, it might be a good thing to, to, to do that so you can actually see her and, and see what's going on, too. Um, but I do want to uh, I, I do want to thank our sponsors first for um, for being able to uh, bring bring Paige failing to us. Um, uh, Jim Allen Group, Truist, and Go Prime uh, sponsored this morning's uh, speaker and very excited about it. And JC, I'm going to turn it over to you, sir, to introduce our, our page failing here. Hey, thanks, David. I'd say one of the coolest things in life is when a friend introduces you to a new friend, right? So I, I said, met Paige this morning for the first time in virtual, right? And I said, any friend of David is a friend of mine. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we've known each other almost uh, an hour now. And, uh, you know, my life has already been enriched. So, you know, I came bringing some gear. So, you know, she's the master of the one word sentence. And I became the master of the no word sentence. Can you guys read that sentence? Okay, yeah. Uh, and so, but it was so fun because the people that mean the most to us usually come from people that mean the most to us now, right? And it just expands our network and expands our life. So I learned so much about Paige today. I, I can already, already tell you she played softball. You know, she's the master of the one word sentence, right? I can tell you her walk up song, uh, but maybe she'll reveal that. But I'm not I'm not going to lay that kind of uh, detail out to you yet. Uh, but I thought I'd do something a little different this morning because I know she likes athletics and and she came uh, from Tar Heels. I even have the right color mug, right, Paige? There we go. So uh, yeah. let, let, let me do it this way. So uh, starting at presenter today, out of the University of North Carolina, standing six feet tall with three kids and four pets that lives on a block with 20 other family members where there may have been some bloodshed, but there has been no deaths. That means she's a master of communication and the master of one word sentences. Help me welcome Paige Faye. Woo! Oh, oh my goodness, JC in the house. I mean, best intro ever. Boy, they told me I would like you. They didn't tell me I would love you. And I am just, let's be honest. We're, I, yes, and he's turned the hat backwards for us as well. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. I'm bringing you on the road with me if we ever are back on the road, right? We're stuck in Zoomville still for a little bit. JC, thank you so much. Uh, he mentioned this, but for those of you who haven't yet, if you want to switch your view to speaker view, you can go ahead and do that. And that way uh, you get a little bit of humanity this morning, right? Because that's what we lose on Zoom so often here now. And it can just kind of get tricky. So we're going to talk about that today a little bit. When I talked to David and Jill about what would be most useful today, David said, let's talk about Zoom. Let's talk about audience engagement and let's talk about delivery because that is what we've kind of lost right when you get used to it you've had a year of zoom and it can still be so tricky for people 
And I get it. It's tricky. And the cool thing is there's an entire industry that has been doing quote unquote Zoom or that style of communication with people for decades. And that's television. And that is my world. We have been talking to little black holes with nobody actually live behind them forever. So there's lots of lessons we can learn from that world that we can put into practice. Now, whether or not we're on a computer screen or we are getting back to in person, which we are, which is a wonderful way to be moving in that direction as well, too. However, we are still doing a lot of Zoom, right? So let's talk about all of the above and things that can be useful throughout any interaction that we have. I want to talk about Zoom here first for an article that I saw actually that came out. Jennifer Nason is with Wells Fargo. She wrote an article. It's really great. Her, her take on it was actually how Zoom has been empowering for women in the workplace over this past year and how it has give, given women visibility and uh, power that they hadn't had before. I would argue it has really been or can be empowering for anyone who doesn't typically have their voice heard or who hasn't had a place at the table throughout much of their time in-person interaction at work or maybe just hasn't been comfortable doing that, right? So she points out in, in the article that Zoom, when you're on a Zoom, if you have it in gallery view, which hopefully you don't necessarily right now, just so that you get a little human, human interaction here, you're all the same size square though, right? You've got a name, but not necessarily a title. So that's kind of an equalizer there. There's not a hierarchy of like the head of the conference room table and then everyone else who's sitting and you're jockeying for a space for where you can sit on there. You are able to come to so many more things because you can be invited to a Zoom for a lot less money than you can be flown across the country to go to a meeting somewhere. There's there's a lot of really positive things. And she talks about then taking the power square mentality back to when we're in person. So I want to point something out. Look at your screens here and I can adjust this a bit. That's the cool thing about Zoom too, is you can kind of show how the sausage is made. When you're on television you're, and you watch the TV news, you get these like very sort of robotic, we I always call them news bots, people who kind of pretend like something just crashed in the background or you just spilled your coffee on your anchor desk, which I did numerous times. And they pretend like, oh, we're gonna all just pretend like that never happened. First of all, here's one Zoom little tip for you that I have learned throughout the years. Yes, it's Carolina Blue, JC. And this has a top. So when I take my drinks throughout my Zoom and I put it back down, if I spill it, it's not gonna spill all over the place. Sarah Blakely, the founder of Spanx, had a cup the other day and she uh, spilled it in the middle of her Zoom. It kind of went viral because she was in the middle of a talk and you see they have a camera over here and you see her knock her entire water glass over and pour all over her lap but I guess it didn't show up on whatever screen she was on. So she just continues on for her 45 minute keynote or whatever it was with a so soaking wet lap and a puddle of water all by her floor. So if you want to help avoid that, there's just a little, a little mini tip for you there. Okay, so look at how this is framed. If you see me, all of you look great, by the way, on your Zooms today, you've, you've been doing this long enough to know this is how this looks good. So there is a word for this though, in terms of how you're framed, it's called the rule of thirds. And in TV, you want your subject to take up about a third of the view, right? So you've got yourself in the middle here. Hopefully you're well lit in my room here. I've got all the windows open. I've got the blinds pulled. I have every light on in the room that I'm in on and I've got a front light. I've got a, a, I've got a, a ring light here behind me. Also have my cute background. I know y'all hopefully enjoy this cute wallpaper that I have. It is a perfect Zoom background. If you don't have a great colorful kind of bright or professional looking, I mean, we all have the bookshelves now, everyone's got those. You can get those virtual backgrounds now that look great. But the lesson here to learn from TV too is how TV varies things, okay? You guys actually did a great job of this. At the beginning of this presentation, when you had your, your slides up, you went from so many different things there with how people were, who, who was addressing the group. You had a lot of different people come up and show different types of things. So it didn't stay stagnant. You weren't just looking at one person the whole time. TV does that. Why? When you turn into onto the TV news, you see your anchor right at the beginning. Hello, welcome into your, I'm just going to use my old station, Fox 46 News. I'm Paige Failing. Thanks for joining us today. Today in Fuqua Verena. I got you, Alan. Today in Fuquay Arena, and then the, the 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 camera shifts, right? And you see a little bit of the of the person switch over here, and you see a graphic come up over their shoulder. We had a water boil advisory. That wasn't in Fuquay, that was in Charlotte, but I'm using it just for the example here. Then a lower third comes up. 500,000 people affected. It just messes with your mind just a little bit every time that you're able to, so that you are able to not have to get locked in and just see that one thing. Now, I don't expect you all to be making lower thirds at home, okay? I get that that's not quite possible, but the more you can kind of give a little bit of variety there, and the more fabulous you look in your Zoom, 
the more the media is going to want to talk to you for an interview subject. Now, you are marketers, many of you are, so I hope that you are doing this already. And if you're not, here is the tip that will get going to get you many more interviews, okay? So when you, when you have an interview come on, first of all, if you're on Zoom, you want to follow the rule of thirds, right? You're a third, you're in the, the center, be well lit. Like, I mean, watch TV. They use people all the time who don't look good, but you're going to get a lot more calls and a lot more interviews if you do look good. If they know that they can count on you, I can't tell you how many news meetings I've been in where we go. And by the way, because you guys are in the news every day now, your industry is it's like, like you guys and Dr. Fauci, right? All anybody wants to talk about still is home sales and home builds and why is stuff taking so long and how much do things cost and where are we with coronavirus numbers? So you should be getting calls every single day to do interviews for people. And if you're not, reach out and get that because you are you are wanted right now. They just don't know how to find you. So when they get you, you want to look good, right? If you're on Zoom, if you are doing an interview in person, which we are getting back to more and more of that, you'll and, and many of you know this because I'm sure you've done it before, but the interviewer is going to sit down, the reporter will sit down behind the camera, right? They'll sit kind of to the side of the camera and they'll say, okay, just look at me. The camera's right here. Okay. Pretend this is my camera. The camera's right here. Look at me and talk to me. Forget about the camera. Don't worry about this, which by the way, is hard to do if you're not used to having a camera in your face the whole time. So just go with it. But it does give you a human being to talk to and not have to just address the camera. The reason that they do that now, look at your screen here and see what happens with me. I'm in the center here, right? For a zoom, I want to be in the center. The reason that they do that and they say, look at me is because this is how you're being shot. Here's the rule of, of thirds when you are in an interview setting. You want the person looking in a way so that when you're watching your screen, if you're watching this at home, this looks a lot more natural, doesn't it? Then first of all, I'm not gonna stare at you like this. If someone has, if the voice of God has just asked me a question and I say, yeah, you know, home sales are up, but things are pushed back a couple months. Like it feels weird as the viewer at home to, this person's talking to the reporter, but they're staring right at me, like through my soul. So they have you look at them, the reporter, and they want some headspace there, that two thirds. If, if you're like this, if you're framed up like this, that feels weird because you wonder, well, what's over here? What's over, why is this person's face over like this? You keep that space there and they should walk you through that. But if they don't, you know to make that look the right way. By the way, also just a little quick media training tip there. When you get asked to do an interview, and you will because you're going to be a great interview now. When you get asked to do an interview, show up to it either on Zoom or in person with a one pager. Okay. If you they tell you ahead of time, we're hearing that people are, you know, their, their home builds are getting pushed out. It's taking longer than they wanted and things are costing more than that's what we're going to talk to you about today. So when you show up to that interview, have on your one pager, your name and how to pronounce your name. Okay. My name is Paige Failing. It's Paige with no I. And you say failing, like failing a test, give people a mnemonic, write it out. Cause otherwise, as we can see all the time with names. And I loved, by the way, Paul, when you jumped in and just just helped Alan out with the Fuquay, right? By the way, we've all uh, heard Fuquay pronounced far worse ways than how you pronounced it. So thankfully you just, you just needed a little tweaking. Sometimes it would have needed like an R rating for the way that people say Fuquay Verino. So you give them your pronouncer and give them a couple bullet points. Here's, here's the numbers. Here's how many homes are being built this month. Here's how that compares to this time last year in our market. Here's how Raleigh and Wake County compares to the rest of the country. Those reporters, if you show up with information like that to an interview, you will get called again and again and again. And you want to get called again and again and again because that is free advertising and free marketing for you. And every time you show up on their news program, it's your name and your company's name and you're the expert. So that will help get that, get your face and your name to them more. All of that to say, let's talk about how you're engaging your audience, okay? If you were on a Zoom or if you are in person, there are several ways that you can do that. All TV news really is, is telling stories. You're trying to do it in a captivating way. So rather than starting off a news story with, there are 7,000 new coronavirus cases today. You'll hear the story instead, they start with Mary Jones woke up this morning and she felt a little tickle in her throat. She went to the doctor and she fit. you make it about the person first, right? And you tell the story first. So find a way to do that for anything that you're trying to get across to people too. Uh, I'm gonna show a picture here with you because this is an example that we used. We had a doctor, how do I do my share screen? Hold on, I'm uh, gonna get this right. Okay, okay, there we go. This little knucklehead is now 11. I believe he was about four in this picture. This is my younger son, Cal. And this is a good example of how to make kind of trickier information. Sometimes you guys work with a lot of numbers, I imagine, when you're talking about building supplies or square footage or things that, that people who do not work in your industry may not comprehend as well as you do. So Cal's about four in this picture, and he has a big personality 
And let me tell you, y'all, Cal has a kid cannot wear a hat. I'm going to give you a little perspective here of just how it shapes up when he's uh, compared to his peers. This was Cal at his four-year-old soccer game. He's a failing. We're large people. JC mentioned there at the start, I'm almost six feet tall. My husband's about six, six. Uh, he's a big kid, right? We had a doctor one time tell us Cal, Cal, Cal's head is off the charts big, okay, in terms of numbers wise. And we said, what does that really mean? Like, can you can you give it into perspective for us to really let us know sort of how this is affecting? We said, we're going to send you to, to an MRI just to make sure that everything's okay. And we go, okay, I, all right. We go into the to the room there and the, the MRI tech is there and he looks up and he says, all right, I, we're doing a head check, right? Yep. You the mom? And I said, yep, yeah, I'm the mom. Are you, you the dad? Yep, yep, I'm the dad. And he goes, kids just got a big head. I can look at the two of you and tell your kids just got a big head, but we'll check it just to be sure. Okay. So he puts them through, they, they check the measurements. We go back to the doctor and he goes, he's fine. You guys were right. Cal's head is just, it's just big, but we just wanted to check to be sure. We said, well, doc, can you, can you give us a little help here? How big is it? And he goes, all right, let's think of it this way. Cal's in a room with a hundred kids. He's going to be taller than about 98 of those kids, right? Cal's in a room with a hundred other kids. He's going to weigh more than about 98 of those kids. If you put Cal in a room with 300 other kids, he will still always have the biggest head. <laughs> and we went, okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Now I can visualize that and I kind of know what you're talking about. Um, analogies are great for that too. And numbers, again, with, with the numbers that you guys do, not everyone is functions the way your brains do. You could tell me there were 700 people in this room with me right now or five, and I would believe either one because I just don't have a good concept of that type of thing. When I was living in New York, we were looking at apartments and I was talking to real estate agents and they would say, you know how New York real estate is ridiculous. You don't have a concept of how small the small spaces people can and will live in and what they'll pay for it until you've lived in New York or maybe San Francisco. And they, I remember one person said, I don't remember the exact numbers. It's a studio apartment. It's a little small. It's about, it's about 340 square feet. And I remember thinking, oh, 340, like that's, that's a pretty big number. I, I, how big is it? And I looked it up and I think that's about the size of, of a school bus. So you go, okay, do I want to live in a school bus? Maybe not. If you can help people visualize anything, anytime you're talking about numbers and it just kind of helps to bring them in like that too. I'm going to show you another picture here. Okay. That will help you with some, oh, you know what, David just mentioned him. So here's a visual for you. Uh, this is, let me bring this one back up. This is Jake. This is, who David, this is who David was talking about during the call. Who's the hype man? Now I bring this up because Jake looks exactly like Jason Sudeikis, who is on the left-hand side here. I labeled him for you because I don't know if you're like me. I'm looking back and forth between the two and I literally almost cannot tell the difference. Now, he looks exactly like Jason Sudeikis. And the reason that I bring that up to you and show you that picture is because pop culture references are a great way to connect with people. Not everybody looks like Ted Lasso. I get that. But if you can talk about Ted Lasso, which everyone is watching, or if you can talk about Game of Thrones, which I'm the only person in the whole world who didn't watch, or if you talk about a, a Friends reference. I just watched the Friends reunion because I'm late to the game on all television, but I watched the Friends reunion the other night and my husband, Jason Sudeikis, walked in and he went, oh, I don't get it. Why did this person just go like this? And I go, you don't watch for you. You don't get this reference. And then they made some, some comment about Ross and Rachel, were they on a break? And he goes, what, were, were those two a couple? And I was like, oh, yeah. You're kidding the game here, buddy. But most people will get good pop culture references, even if you don't happen to look like a celebrity yourself. So you can use those as well. All right, I'm going to share my screen one more time here because I want to make a point here. A lot of uh, the questions that I get surrounding, surrounding, why is this not working? Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, what to do and how to use PowerPoint. Okay, so I'm, I want to pull up a slide here and really have you guys absorb all the information that I'm giving to you right now. And PowerPoint's a really, really impressive tool and it's really helpful for everybody to use and you can impart some really important uh, information you know and you can give everybody some really good and helpful stuff for them to get that none of you have heard anything I probably just said right now because you're reading the mounds of words I just put on your screen and your brain simply cannot do two things at once right the top of this slide says don't pay attention to me pay attention to this slide so if you follow the instructions here and you were reading along there you didn't hear anything that I said and don't worry by the way I didn't say anything too important to make the point that you need to not do two things at once don't ask your audience to look at something 
and hear you at the same time. The way this plays out in visual mediums that have done this forever is you show visual parts, right? Showing those pictures is something that your brain can take in in a different way than your brain has to take in words. You, the, the part of your brain that is listening to words can take in a visual part and know that, and, and process that information and then get the verbal information through your ear, right? That you're hearing there. If you're trying to read something and process all of that, it's just tricky. So if you are on a Zoom and you're the host of the Zoom and you're talking for longer than just sort of what you did at the beginning here, which like I said, I thought that was a very perfectly appropriate way to use PowerPoint because you were switching so much and it would have almost felt jarring to an audience to go from this person in speaker view to then this person sharing their screen and this person doing that. It was a perfectly appropriate way to do that. Now for me, I'm talking here for 30 to 40 minutes. You don't have a human connection of a person in a room with you. So I want you to be able to see me and feel like you're talking and hearing from a person. However, I don't want you just staring at me the whole time because you'll get bored and it gets weird and we're not actually in the same room. So I'm popping up a couple pictures every now and then to give a little bit of variance to have you give something while some of you are folding laundry right now. Look, I get it. I'll tell you when to look up on your screen and when you need to look up on your screen, that way you can do that and it gives you something to kind of keep you engaged the whole time. Let's talk about your delivery, okay? <sighs> There's a couple things with delivery that are important. Now, see what I just did there? I kind of looked down and looked up. The eye contact part of delivery is very tricky on Zoom. And it takes a little bit of practice. When you are watching the news, and I know so many people say like, well, I don't really watch the news anymore, sorry. Just tune in tonight and pay attention to a couple of things that I've said, and you'll start to see what I mean. And you've watched it before too, you can certainly picture news. But when you're watching the news and you have a news anchor there, you'll see a lot of paper shuffling, right? You used to see more of this. Now everyone has surfaces, but you still see paper shuffling or looking down because it helps to kind of break up the time of someone just staring at you and just looking at the camera, which again, feels almost invasive as a viewer when you're at home. So I heard a great quote one time about eye contact and eye contact, I'm counting it as eye contact, even when you're just looking at a screen, right? So eye contact is like electrical current. If you look away too much or too quickly, you lose power. If you make it go for too long, it's shocking. Isn't that great to, to make those two? So that, that can be the same thing for in-person or on Zoom. Do this right now. If you're, if you're looking at your screen, look at your screen. You should, you should see me in, in speaker view there. Now see where I'm talking, okay? See what I'm looking at, where my eyes are. And does it feel like I'm talking to you and looking at you? It should. Now, where does it look? If I'm, I'm, I'm now looking down in gallery view and you can, a very subtle difference, but you see that difference, right? Of the, the eye contact being lost there. I'm not looking at the camera anymore. Now I'm looking down. This is what happens when you're watching the news and the news anchor says, today, Charlotteans woke up to 3000 people without water in their homes. Our JC has more. And the news, and you see the, the eyes shift down just a bit. That's because I know, don't worry, JC, I'm not going to make you give a report right now. You're just an example. You're one of the names I know. And you just have two initials, so it's super easy. So you see the, the, the subtle shift down with the eyes, right? That's because the way a teleprompter works is you have the screen here, which has the camera behind it, okay? So you've got the, the television screen and the camera behind it. The teleprompter words are going on in front of a screen that is being reflected by a mirror underneath. They put the words in upside down and backwards so that that mirror reflects the words onto the teleprompter. So when a news anchor is making eye contact with you, looking at the camera, they're reading the words that are going right in front of that camera. They put them very big, no more than three to five words per line so that you don't have shifty eyes going back and forth. Nobody wants to hear their news from a shifty eyed person, right? But you're also able to maintain that eye contact with people. Then when they look down, they're looking down at that monitor that's underneath that has what people at home are seeing. So you're cutting to video. So it's sort of a natural, it's like a sign to viewers. Okay, now is your time to look at the video. When you can do that yourself as well. But when you're on Zoom, it's tricky, right? Because you want to see people. You want to look at, you're looking at yourself or you're looking at what everybody else is doing on camera. Barbara Corcoran from Shark Tank. You guys know Barbara Corcoran. She's she's your people. She's a real estate mogul. She has a trick where she puts a picture of her mom behind the Zoom camera so that she can look at somebody and something and a person that she feels comfortable talking to. If you need to use a trick like that, that's a good way to sort of get past the fact that you feel like you're just staring into a black hole there. Let's talk about your faces. Have you guys all heard the term RBF? Pardon my French. It stands for resting bitch face. That's not, I didn't make it up, blame SNL, okay? 
I can see many of your beautiful faces right now and I don't see any RBF. So congratulations. But for those of you who do have RBF, if you just kind of your natural thinking face doesn't necessarily maybe feel the warmest to people, if you've ever heard that before or noticed yourself, have you seen those memes where it's like how I look in my mind, how I look in real life and the, you know, how I look in my mind is like, and how I look in real life is you're just sort of absorbing. Some people process on the inside. When you, One of the things I, I used to teach a lot of was Myers-Briggs personality type indicators. And one of the best things between extroverts and introverts, the most obvious thing that people would talk about is how they process information. Extroverts are all out. You can see it on their face. They're thinking of it. They're giving you, they're your friendlies in the audience. When you're speaking in front of a group, I always tell people, find your friendlies. Look for the people who are nodding and mm -hmm and at least smiling and visually showing you they're absorbing it people with RBF may not be thinking anything bad about what it is that you're saying. They're just not, they're processing on the inside. So it doesn't play out great on their face. If you want to fix that for yourself, because you want to seem warm and receptive to your audience and you want to up your energy, I have a trick for you. Do you have a pen? Does everybody have a pen? Hopefully you have your own pen because you're at home somewhere. I don't want to get anybody germs, right? For COVID stuff. So you can use your finger or just use something else. If you don't, if you're not comfortable doing this with the pen, take your pen, Put it in between your teeth and count up to 10 and down to one again for me. Ready? Do not let your lips touch your pen. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just, I'm just assuming you're counting with me. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take it out. How do you feel? Many of you are smiling. Some people are giggling when we do this in a, in a live setting, in a workshop class. Everybody's kind of laughing with each other. It ups your energy. Studies show that if you put your muscles in your, in, your, in your mouth, even just into the shape of a smile, if you're not even feeling the emotion behind it, it releases endorphins in your brain. It gives you energy and it will change your whole mood. So try that trick. Let's talk about volume here. Not as much of an issue on Zoom if you've checked it technically, right? But microphones are a big issue when you are back in person. Always ask what kind of microphone you're going to have. I'm going to show you another picture here. And, and uh, I'm just, you know what, David, just what happens on Zooms uh, today stays on Zooms. Okay, don't tell Jake that I'm sharing all these, all these pictures of him. He knows that I do. He won't care. Because this actually trended in Raleigh the day that I took this picture. Uh, this is my husband who should know better on a, on a, a, a panel, a dad panel, and they gave them handheld microphones, which is great. I love a handheld mic. And somehow he seemed to forget that he had it in his hand in between questions. And he, for an hour, every time he was done, he would put the microphone down like this. And I kind wife that I am, snapped a picture and tweeted it out using the hashtag microphone envy. And I fit trended in Raleigh that day. For those of you who may have been on Twitter at the time, perhaps you'll remember. Now I show that picture just to show you what can happen when you don't play the microphone game, right? So because we're quick on time here, I'll just give you quick tips. Always ask what kind of microphone situation is when you're going to be speaking somewhere. If you'll have a clip on mic like this one, you can clip it onto your clothes. Wear something with a waistband. We'll make it a little bit easier for you to do. If you don't have a waistband, ladies, here's an old TV trick for you also. This, I don't know why they make these lacy, by the way. I am not showing you anything scandalous right now. You can also use an ace bandage. This is called a girly go garter, and it just wraps around. See, it Velcro's there. You can just wrap it around like this, and then it's got little pockets. So if you, you put it on your leg, if your legs aren't showing, you can put it into the pockets. You can put your microphone there and you can put any kind of earpiece or anything like that that you need. Again, like I said, you could just use an ACE bandage if you need to. If you are on Zoom and you're wanting to mic, maybe your Zoom, maybe your computer is in a room that has some more echo. If you've got hardwood floors or tile in there, your volume's not going to be as great coming just through your computer. So you might want to invest in just a simple clip on microphone and you can clip it onto your leg by using a girly go garter or a, what if you have an ace bandage from your kid who sprained his ankle last weekend and you can just use that and kind of wrap it around your leg and then it's hidden it's out of the way you'll notice also for this zoom uh because I, you're not seeing any of the rest of this i'm standing up because it ups my energy so consider that also if you have a standing desk or if you have something higher you can put your your camera on a lot of news stations transition to this type of thing as well instead of having anchors sit at an anchor desk they have them stand because people just have more energy and it just helps to kind of pass that along to the audience uh, your, your body language number one question that i get from anybody whether it's a one-on-one -on -one coaching session for public speaking or it's in an auditorium with a ton of people who do this all the time and they still go what do I do with my hands? And on Zoom, that becomes even more of an issue because we can only see you from about the armpits up usually, right? I'll show you what not to do with your hands first. And this is it. 
But this Greg Olson, for you guys who uh, are not have not watched the Carolina Panthers for the past couple of years, he's no longer with us as a Panther, unfortunately. He was one of my faves, but he is still around Charlotte a lot, and he speaks a ton, and he has this wonderful charity organization called Have a Heart. And unfortunately, Greg Olson is gesturing in this picture, and that is the one thing I will caution you against when doing motions with your hands, okay? Now, I will say also, First of all, Greg Olson is tall, so his vigester is a little bit high there. Somewhere along the way, someone in a public speaking class years ago said, you know what, if you don't know what to do with your hands, and this is for on camera too, if you watch old like 2020s or Datelines, Barbara Walters and Hugh Downs, they, I'm going to back up here so you can get a full view. They would stand there and they would go, welcome in. It's a very formal way to say hello. And tonight on 2020, we're going to be addressing the fact that I have decided for some reason to make a frame around my crotch and that feels like a way, a comfortable way to stand here. In athletics, they call this the fig leaf. Ath athletes often stand like this. It's just not a very comfortable, very inviting pose for people. So what to do with your hands? Well, if you're standing like this, if you're in front of a group of people and you talk with your hands, let yourself talk with your hands. If you feel like you're getting a little too flaily, find a nice home base, okay? We like to say home base is between your hips and your shoulders. And if you need to just kind of come back and gently clutch one of your fingers, that's kind of a nice, comfortable way to do that. Then you can go out, come back to home base if you need to, go out, come back to home base if you need to. On Zoom, here's what you see, right? It's a whole different story. So again, if you talk with your hands, you might need to raise them a little higher. This looks weird if you see my whole body. Why are my hands all the way up like this? If you only see me from here up and you're seeing my hands be, come into part of the picture, it suddenly doesn't feel weird anymore, right? It feels kind of natural. And if you see my hands down here and I'm moving around, but you can't see exactly what I'm doing, that feels weird. So be aware of what people can see and how it's all playing out. Oh, we're short on time. Okay, let's keep going through this real quick. Okay, so we got your uh, body language that we just uh, talked about, what to do with your hands quickly because again one of the biggest questions that i get is memory should i memorize something or should i have it written out there is a formula okay i call this the formula for memory and it is attention plus intention minus tension equals retention you can write that down i'll send it out in one page or afterwards if you want attention plus intention minus tension equals retention you got to pay attention to what you're doing you read a, a page in a book and the whole time you you read it 15 times you have no idea what it is because you didn't intend to read it i mean because you didn't pay enough attention to where it's stuck in your brain you have to intend to make it go somewhere in your memory also i'm a klutz and i used to always say i didn't mean to and my mom would go well you need to mean not to you need to make that intention a part of the action okay? Okay. Equal uh, minus tension. You can't have stress. Studies have shown that in college campuses, if people who have been studying for a test do an hour of yoga before the test, instead of an hour more of studying, they actually do better on the test because it helps to clear your brain. So you need to clear that stress out of the way. And that leads to retention. Now, retention, oh, excuse me. Uh, yes, retention. Retention is different from retrieval. Okay. You have to put it somewhere in your brain so that your brain can find it. I like to call those peg words. That's in the in the in the memory world. We call those peg words because it, it's hanging it somewhere. If somebody comes into your office and they hand you pieces of paper throughout the morning and every time they hand it to you, you throw it over your shoulder, you go, thank you. Thank you. Got it. Okay. And they come back at the end of the day and they say, Hey, you know that paper that I gave you on the house on Spring Street? Can you can you find that for me? And you go, yeah, hold on, I'll get to it somewhere. It's there. It's just going to take you a while to find it. If you put it somewhere in an organized structure, you will be able to get to it that much more quickly. Your memory takes in all of this information. It's just a question of getting to it. That's why you'll hear a song. You go, rain on me, rain, rain. What's that? Who, who sings that song, that rain song? And you can't think of it for 10 minutes. So you move on. And that night you wake up at two in the morning and you go, Ariana Grande. Because your, your brain was still trying to find it. It was shuffling through all those files back there and it finally found it. So you need to make it easier for yourself to do that. Oh, we are at 10. Can I can I do a quick example with, with, with uh, people? Anybody who needs to jump off can. David, is it okay to, to do an example? Yes. Okay. Thumbs up. Okay. So I'll do, I'll still make this quick. I won't, I won't be more than five more minutes just to get this in for you so that you can see how it goes. Uh, somebody, anybody want to raise a hand? This is super easy. It's I'm going to ask you for grocery items. It will not be something hard for you at all. But can I get a volunteer to jump in with me here? And David or Jill, I'm going to make you do it with me. If nobody, there we I, go. I David think, just unmuted himself. David's yeah, well, I, I think I think Ned's up. Ned Ned is ready with the grocery list. Ready? What you need? Ned. Ned, I love it. Okay, so everybody at home, just make a list on your page or think in your head because these rhyme, so you'll be able to remember it. Okay, the way that you're going to remember these pegs is you have numbers one through ten, and you have a you have a rhyming word that goes with them. So one is bun. Two is shoe. I'm going through these quickly. Again, I can get these in a one page or two after. Three is tree. 
Four is door. Five is hive. Six, sticks. Seven, heaven. Don't worry, Ned, you don't have to memorize this part. Eight, gate. Nine, line. And 10 is hen. Now you can remember those words easily because they rhyme with the number and you know your numbers. Everyone knows the numbers one through 10. If you're trying to remember your steps through a speech, you assign it a visual to go with this. So Ned, we're gonna do three here just for the purposes of time. One is bun. Tell me, don't, don't let that concern you in terms of what I'm asking you now. Give me an item. If you're doing, if you're driving in your car right now and you go, oh, I gotta go to the grocery store. I gotta remember to get this tonight. What's one thing you wanna pick up at the grocery store tonight? Uh, peanut butter. Or at Target. Peanut butter from Target. Perfect. Oh, well, that's okay. That's totally perfect because bun is our word to remember one, right? And peanut butter is our item. So you need to make it crazy visual with as many senses as you can bring into this picture to make this visual. So you got your peanut butter, right? You, you're smearing your peanut butter into the bun. I'm going to make my peanut butter sandwich an all around peanut butter sandwich so that, so that I can really feel when I pick that bun up, my fingers are coated in peanut butter. I can smell that peanut butter. It's dripping off the sides of it. Peanut butter is there. Maybe in fact, instead of spreading it in the middle, I spread it on the outside and I just put the jar of peanut butter in between that bun and I'm holding the bun with the peanut butter in it. Do you have that locked into your brain? All right. One bun peanut butter is our item. Two, our word is shoe. What's your item? Socks. <laughs> Give me... It does have to be related to the word that rhymes. I'm, I'm trying unrelated. to make it easy for myself here. Store. I know that there's going to be a quiz afterwards. I've got to, I've, Peter, I've got to make it easy for myself. <laughs> All right, let's say Kool-Aid. I like the strategy. Give me something with the Kool-Aid. Okay, perfect. So Kool-Aid. So you've got Kool-Aid. I'm, I'm drinking Kool-Aid out of my shoes there, right? It's red Kool-Aid and these are white sneakers. So you've got the red Kool-Aid dripping out. It's splashing all over the place. You've got the, the, the laces are you, well, maybe one of the shoes is shaped like the Kool-Aid guy. Okay. And you've got, you're picking it up by the side and they're really weird shoes to walk around in because you've got the Kool-Aid handle that's coming out and you, and it smells like who wants to drink Kool-Aid out of a shoe, right? So you pick it up to smell and you kind of have the fruity smell of the Kool-Aid, but also the shoe smell of the shoe. And you got that locked into your memory right two your word is shoe your item you want to remember is kool-aid okay number three i'm not going to say the word because i'm i don't want to throw you off <laughs> what's your item that you want from the grocery store uh let's see eggs okay eggs so three our word is tree and your item is eggs let's have an egg tree okay on the on the tree instead of leaves there's eggs all over the and when you're walking under an egg tree that is just the wrong place to be because those eggs are falling plopping right on your head. They're cracking open. You got yolk going down your face. There's wind going, you hear the eggs kind of going through there. Some of them are brown eggs. Some of them are white eggs. Maybe there's, well, I won't say there's chickens there because then you'll get chickens and you'll think your item is chicken, but just eggs all over the place. You see the yolk dripping down the tree bark. Okay. Number three, your word is tree. What's your item to remember? Eggs. Number one, your word was bun. What's your item to remember? Peanut butter. Number two, your word was shoe. What's your item to remember? Kool-Aid. Number three, your word was tree. What's your item to remember? Eggs. Ned, all-star. A plus for you, buddy. <laughs> now, again, we only did three right now. Yes, there we go. We only did three because of time. But you can see how this becomes, you, you can do it up to 10 in terms of the numbers. This is the method people use when they do those crazy things on stages where they memorize the whole phone book or they memorize crazy amounts of things because they put it in things they can actually remember and put a, pull it off a peg easily because they could find it. That's a way to help yourself memorize points in a talk that you want to get to. Also, if you don't have notes, if you are afraid you might lose your notes, or if you have a talk that you want to memorize, there's ways to kind of make that happen too. So my challenge to you all before we go is between now and where are we in the middle of October? the middle of November, by Thanksgiving, give yourself a challenge to speak up in some type of setting that you don't typically do that you haven't done. Maybe you want to address a Zoom. Maybe you want to approach someone at a networking event. Maybe you want to say, hey, you know what? I have an idea for a charity event we can do as a group, and I'd like to make that pitch to the group. Somewhere that you can employ some of these things that we've talked about today, and then put it into practice, and then keep putting it into practice, and you'll become more and more comfortable in all the different settings and all the different ways that you communicate on Zoom, in the boardroom, face-to-face -face when a client comes into a house that you're talking about, uh, wherever you may be, who knows, maybe you'll decide to do a TED Talk if you use enough of this stuff, right? Don't worry about starting there, but challenge yourself to use this somewhere. And whatever you do, always remember, 
friends don't let friends for gesture. You're going to see that everywhere now, by the way. I get emails all the time of that people say that that's the one thing that, that people remember for years after this. Don't let yourself do that, but let yourself do everything else. Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, David or Jill, whoever would like to jump back in to kind of wrap things up. I'm sorry we went a little bit over time, uh, but I appreciate y'all being here with me. Thanks a lot. Thanks for doing it, Paige. Appreciate you um, giving us all this intel. And gang, I hope this is I hope this has been useful. I, I know that uh, a couple of people were sending me texts and I saw some comments here in the chat. You know, the, the whole idea with this is Paige was in the, the news um, as an anchor for 10, 15 years, 20 years, I think, overall. And she's been doing what we have sort of just figured out how to do over the last year and a half to two years. So um, I hope that you were able to take some um, relevant and tangible things away from this. I know I, I took a, a page of notes and um, things not to do as well. So uh, I got some I got some work to do and I, I got a couple things and I got to fix my hand situation, but I've got some tips now. So I saw Jill, Jill and I were both like testing our hands simultaneously. Um, but gang, um, uh, definitely um, thank you for hanging in there and, and uh, spending some time with us today. I will remind you, and this is new, so don't don't lose this. We typically don't have a November breakfast because we're in Zoom world still, we can do this. So we are going to have a November breakfast. Um, it is going to be November 17th. So go ahead and mark your calendars. Um, we are actually gonna have a panel of our TSMC members um, sharing some best practices and things that we've learned about how to best run our business and how to be the best version of whatever our job title is. We're gonna have some suppliers on, we're gonna have marketers, on-site sales agents, some builders. Um, it's going to be a very interesting uh, and engaging conversation, I think. So November 17th, don't, don't uh, uh, forget to mark your calendar. Go ahead and mark it now, and we'll get some details for you so that you can register here in the coming weeks, okay? So again, um, thank you to our sponsors. Paige, thank you so much. Thank you to all of you that took time out of your day to come and, and listen and join in. And um, it, we'll wrap it up right here and hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of the week. See you guys. Thank you so much. Little Jill, houses. I was looking to see. I was looking to see if Ned was still on. I was going to see if we could uh, take this thing all the way up to ten. If he could remember all the way up to ten. Hey, oh, Brent. that would be cool. See you, man. Good seeing you guys today. Yeah, thank you all so much for uh, for signing in. And I'm going to try and stop the recording, but my mouse will not go to my second screen here. Okay. This is a little awkward. I love awkward situations. I know. It's it like great? one of my favorites. But yeah, my mouse will not. And now like we're providing like extra entertainment for people that just can't get off yet. They can't hang up yet. I know. I know. I think David or you or I, you, I have a stop video option. Do you, since I, since we're host to it might let us do it. Do you want me to try that? Yeah, if you don't mind. Do we, do we need to stop recording first? Oh, that's dumb. All I did is stop my okay. own video. Hello. No, oh, I'm okay. Sorry. I got, I, I have my mouse working. Okay, I'm going to go ahead.